Hey all my Crimsonites and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values, and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Hey there, everybody. How we doing? How are we doing? Oh, we got some members. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Mark Fuller said you are truly making a difference in the ones who hear internally. I hope that I am. Thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you, Miss Kelly, for becoming a member. And thank you, Antonio, as well, for becoming a member. Thank you, Steve. So what it is, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so, so very much. Yeah, we um we got the quake too. I felt it. Yeah. I was like, oh, quake. My husband didn't believe it. He was like, a what? I'm like, that was an earthquake. He was like, that was a what? We don't get them. What you mean that was an earthquake? Yeah. Because believe it or not, Chicago gets earthquakes. I've been in at least two of them. I've been in at least two of them. 
in my lifetime. At least two. But these were, um, the one that was in New York was low level. So if, if New Jersey got a 4.8, then that was the epicenter. We didn't feel that. We got like a two. Right? So hopefully the people in New Jersey are okay. Because um, a four is not the most um, destructive. But, you know, it can get some things damaged. Yeah, but I don't think people realize Chicago has mini quakes. I call them little mini quakes. Sometimes you don't even notice them. But now that I know what a small one feels like, it's like, oh, those are quake. That's what a small, that's what a small quake is like. I've never been in a in a in a heavy earthquake. And may Allah protect us from that. Oh, congratulations. I just found out yes, I'm gonna be a dad. Congratulations. Everybody type congrats in the chat room. Congratulations, man. That's good news. <laughs> this what this what Kidrea woman just told him. But now you have been promoted. You are now one of my elite employees. <laughs> You've been promoted. Everything, every dang gone thing. Your name, Jermaine. Oh, baby, it's been your fault. It's been your fault for a whole minute. Okay, so we are going to, yeah, it's been more around the East Coast. That's interesting to, to start having them in places that are not known for having quakes. It's interesting because the buildings are not coded for that. Because the Eastern Seaboard in general is not um, prone to earthquakes. A lot of the time, the buildings, the buildings and the infrastructure will not be coded to withstand an earthquake. Like in LA, those buildings are coded for that because at any point they can get an earthquake and it can be uh, a heavy one because the one of the uh, most active faults, the San Andreas fault line, is in California, runs through California, and is on in the Pacific seabed. So they have to, and just like Taiwan just got an earthquake about a seven point eight or something like that. But if you note, those buildings are not completely crumbled because they have built their infrastructure to withstand a certain magnitude of earthquake. Uh, yeah. Um, yes.
Yeah. The uh the tsunami would do everything that the quake couldn't do. Whatever the quake didn't do, the tsunami that would come your way would finish the job. See, people don't realize where some of these fault lines are because Chicago gets quakes. There's a fault line in the Midwest. It's not ex particularly active, but it is there. So everywhere there's fault lines, there's a potential for the tectonic plates to move. And if they build up enough pressure and they move, because you've got tectonic plates that can move side to side and then you've got the subductions, right? And then there, I think there's one more. So you got plates that grind against and then you've got plates that do this. And eventually this motion, and then that's where you get the, that it was that kind of earthquake, a subduction. Um, that caused all of that damage and what was it 2004 or 2011 where the tsunami wiped out like a quarter million people in seven different countries so i believe that the earthquake that happened in the indian ocean that year was a was a subduction type movement of the plates big quake it was like a i think they said it was like a 10 on the richter scale um if i recall that was one of the biggest quakes that any part of the world has seen in a long time they say it shook the earth on its axis it was so incredible so the the tsunami that came after or the several tsunamis that came after it was not one, was kind of to be expected. Marquis said the split. Okay, that's the other form. When plates split. And so the East African rift. Okay. I knew there was another... Um, type of plate movement. As fascinating as it is to actually talk about the science of um, tectonic plates and fault lines and because I like that sort of thing. Like I'll watch documentary after documentary about earthquakes, tsunamis, you know, volcanic eruptions, the things that cause them and the signs and things of that nature. Um, but anyway, those things fascinate me It's because I'm a nerd. But um, this is not the nerd channel. This is the Crimson Cure channel where we got to talk about why we don't like blowjobs, right? We got to talk about why we don't like blowjobs around here. And I know y'all probably talking about like, what? What are we about to talk about? We definitely are about to talk about the lack of blowjobs and what's going on with blowjobs. We gonna talk about the book. I told y'all Thursday. I mean, I told y'all Wednesday we had a blowjob question that we did not uh, address. I wasn't playing about that. Y'all thought I was just playing. Y'all should know better than that. Y'all should know better. Y'all know me better than that, don't y'all? Y'all know me better than that. Let's let's. Let's go here.
hey, that's what we got. That's what we that that that's how we that's how we get fabulous. That's how we fabulous. Because we gotta talk about earthquakes, fault lines, and blowjobs. Listen. Okay. Okay. So we're going to come back to this. When we continue the conversation. And one of the things that I was talking about was women initiating divorces. And then blaming the men in just about every case. And an important question was posed that I covered last time we were here. And it was posed by the young man in the middle bottom of the row. And he asked the ladies in the panel, which they danced mightily around the question. He asked them if they were even present, if women are even present in their relationships, if men are the only ones responsible for anything in the relationship. They're responsible for the emotional parts. They're responsible for the physical parts. They're responsible for the financial part. They're responsible for the sexual parts. They're, they're responsible for all the parts. But yet, the women are claim that they are also participants within the relationship. And so if the women are participants, in the relationship, what portion of the relationship is their responsibility? That was essentially what was being asked. And they fiend ignorance on this question. They, they pretended not to understand the premise of the question, which was really extremely disingenuous. I think one of the things I hate watching a pan about watching panels is people get on there and do mental gymnastics on simple stuff just because they can't be wrong. They don't want to be wrong. They want to hold on to a, to a position, a narrative or a talking point so badly that they are not willing to allow the truth to penetrate the conversations in order for the conversations to move forward. That's probably one of the biggest holdbacks, right? One of the biggest setbacks and holdbacks for us as a community is that we like, we like narratives so much and we're so invested in a narrative and a talking point that we are unwilling to allow a truth that challenges or even destroys the narrative or the talking point that we've invested so much emotion into that we will deny the reality and deny the truth in order to continue on um, dealing in the narrative and the talking point. And this is why I say I don't do talking points here on this channel, because while you may hear a few talking points here or there, we're not so beholden to the talking point that we can't see the truth. And I want people to really absorb that. You may hear some talking points, but we are not so emotionally beholden to and invested in a talking point that we are unwilling to allow the truth. Because the truth has to prevail. The truth has to be discovered and then accepted. Because you can hear a truth and know it's the truth and don't accept it. And that puts you in a dangerous position as a person to know the truth, to hear it, to acknowledge it as a truth and then reject that truth in order to hold on to whatever you've got going on in your head. I'm going to touch it real quick before we get down to 
this video. For those of us who knows Shaitan's story, that 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 was a big part of his issue. He did not bow to Adam as Allah commanded because of all his hangups with Adam. He realizes his error. He knows the order is true. He knows that Allah's order is to be followed. He knows who Allah is. He's seen Allah. He talked to Allah. Been around Allah. Been around the angels. He, he knows all of this stuff. And he rejects it after acknowledging. After his acknowledgement of all that truth, he rejects it. And that's what makes him shaitan. That's what makes him shaitan. To reject, to hear, to understand, to acknowledge truth, and then turn your face. No, I don't. All because the truth makes you wrong and you can't be wrong. He's the ultimate, I need to be right. He need to be right. He going he gonna to bust the belly of hell wide open, needing to be right. And following his own narrative about stuff. Just a little tidbit. Let's get back. No, it's the one. So I'm going to bring it back just a tad bit. So you can get a little bit context of the conversation. Here we go. It sounds what? cute. Was it, it does like? sound, it sounds well that's what the Lord said, so I guess it sounds good. <laughs> oh, it sounds good. Um, submitting to his leadership, what does that look like? That means allowing him to operate in, in his space and um ultimately um I don't want to say the wrong thing. I want to think this through. You you probably gonna say the wrong thing, but we can still learn from it. Well, I, well, I want my, my response to be thoughtful. I don't want to just say something off the cuff. Mm -hmm. um, submitting to a man's leadership should look like allowing him to um, basically have the last say and to make decisions on the what the fuck is that for? You said it's allow. Loud. Yeah. Loud. Uh -oh. Okay. Mm. Go ahead, Danny. Giving him the space <laughs> to do him. what he is innately um, here to do, which is to lead which is to um be the final say so which is to be the disciplinarian which is to be the provider the protector he can't operate in those spaces and do those things for his family if he doesn't have some sort of autonomy over the family would it what if practically it was like listen you know that man men get post nut clarity right yes so every morning i need a blow job before i get up out of here and go to work practically because i that's, function better in the earth and i'm less likely to get some outside cheeks if i if i go out the house with empty nuts practically i hear you practically that makes sense but um that's an impractical requirement can, can i interject real fast <laughs> no because you're gonna go crazy why no, i'm not because this this the this is why remember when you mean you talked about the god and the man and how a woman demonstrates well, love well, let her answer why, though, Ali, and you can jump in. <laughs> it is impractical to suck dick every single morning before somebody goes off to work, okay? We have other things. Now, I wanted y'all to hear, the, hear Hamp's question. Now, on the surface of that question, it's a kind of a funny a question you would not take seriously but he but he prefaced it did y'all catch the preface he didn't just say if i want a blow job every morning are you going to give it to me that's not what he said okay i want y'all to catch the preface of what he said he didn't just say, well, if I want you to give me a blowjob every morning, you better give it to me. That's not that's not at all what he just said. I'm going to let you hear Hamp's 
the framing of that. And then, and once you capture his framing, the rest of what I say going to make sense. For the family. Would it, what if practically it was like, listen, you know that man, men get post nut clarity, right? Yes. So every morning I need a blow job before I get up out of here and go to work practically because I that's, function better in the earth and I'm less likely okay. to get some outside cheeks. If I, if I go out the house with empty nuts, practically. he's setting the preface. He's prefacing this question with the reason why that is something that he would want. I function better in the world if I get this release in the mornings. Not only will I function better, it's less likely for me to be paying any sexual attention to any other women or entertaining that at all. You make it easier for me to dismiss all of that. Because I have already satisfied this need. So therefore, I am no longer looking outside of this to meet a need that already got met. The need already got met. So I don't have a reason to attempt to have this meet, this need met outside of external of the relationship. Do, do we get... Do we get his preface and his context of what he's saying? Because that is actually important. Now that we've gotten the context, now we're going to hear her dance around it. Practically. I hear you. Practically, that makes sense, but um, that's an impractical requirement. Can I interject real fast? <laughs> no, because you're gonna go crazy. Why? No, I'm not because this this the this is why. I, remember when you me you talked about the God and the man and how a woman demonstrates well, love. Well, let her answer why okay. though, Ali, and you can jump in. <laughs> it is impractical to suck dick every single morning before somebody goes off to work. Okay, we have other things that we need Is to it? do. We have, we have, Thank you, Lauren. Heard what Lauren said. Is it? But is it though? We're going to do some grown folk talking. I'm going to need the thumbs up. I'm going to get hit the like button. Somebody put it on subscriber only mode. Put me on subscriber mo only mode. Is it impractical though? Is it? But I want to know, is it? Maybe I... I, I... I'm just saying. Because I I I don't think it's I don't I don't think it's impractical. Mm -mm. I mean what that take? Ten minutes? Fifteen minutes, maybe. What? What? How long that take? It don't take. It don't take long. It don't take long. I mean, you act like this is the next five hours, and if you know what you're doing, you can time it. But I digress.
because here's the thing. Uh, thank you. I'm glad Miss Bella said that. Because you're supposed to know the methodology. You supposed to know the technical requirement, if you will, of your particular husband. Am I right or wrong? See, I'm trying to be delicate with this, but y'all, but we grown, y'all know what I'm saying. If you understand what your man like in that area, what really turned him on there, what really gets him really going, then why come you can't do that? Now, see, you won't know this if you do not do this. See, practice make better. You understand? If you don't make a cake very often, you are not going to be able to memorize the recipe for the cake. But if you make the cake every day, you will know the recipe with your eyes closed. Right? You can bake that cake to perfection. And the more you get accustomed to baking that cake, the less time it takes, because you know right off the bat, I need two cups of this. I need a half a teaspoon of that. I need give a half a cup of this. Okay, let me put in a cup of sugar. Okay, let me put in two eggs. You already know. You already know. But if you'll never be baking no cakes, okay, then you're going to be confuzzled. At the cake baking request. Don't get me started. Y'all see who up in here. Hmm. If, if, if you don't bake cakes. And furthermore. If you do not like to bake cakes. And somebody say I need you to bake a cake. Every Saturday. You are gonna be frustrated. Why you want me to bake a cake every time? I don't know how I bake the cake. I don't know. See, you're going to be mad. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to be, oh, why they want me to bake these cakes like this? But if you a cake baking master, do you hear what I'm saying today? If you cake, if you bake the cake with your eyes closed, if you can throw it together in a kitchen aid, if you can set the kitchen aid on the correct setting the first time, okay? If you already know that you are at a particular altitude, so you need to put the, 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 the oven at 325, not 350 if you want a soft moist cake. But if you want a cake that's a little bit firmer, you put it on 350. See, see, see you get, if you know about the cake baking, then it don't be frustrating. For somebody say, I need you to bake cake, you be on Johnny on the spot. Baby, I know how to bake these cakes. What kind of cake you want? You want red velvet? You want chocolate? You want yellow cake? What you want? You want? Because I know how to bake the cake. Okay? I know how to bake the dang gone cake. So when she say, it's impractical. To give your husband head every day. But is it though? But if you like him. Ah. If you like your husband. Then how impractical is it? How impractical is it? We gonna go to a commercial break. Y'all focus on baking cakes, but I also want y'all to focus on going to ashkicking.com and hitting the link that is pinned at the top of the chat to get your skin springtime, summertime ready. Because listen, you're gonna have to be butter soft. 
when you putting on your tank top, when you're putting on your t-shirt, when you're putting your, the sundress weather come around, you ain't trying to be ashy. And ash kicking is the way to go to keep you from being ashy. So if you want to keep your skin looking, smelling, feeling, it's absolute best. You need that big jar body butter. That's the big jar body butter. I'm telling you, you need it right now. Hit the link at the top of the chat. If this is going to be your first order, go ahead and take advantage of a 10% discount using the uh, promo code CRIMSON, all right? I don't know how many likes I need, but I owe y'all a bam, 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 bam. You got to hit the like button, bam, bam. You got to uh, 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 okay? Let me get to these super chats. Let's see. Thank you, Stefan. said, Crimson, I can't find your videos on Zaddy contract. Can you please... Put them in a playlist for a Zaddy contract. I'm not sure. I got too many videos. I have to think about it. I don't think about which one you're talking about. Um, thank you, Ramel, for your contribution. Thank you, Miss Bella. Say, give that man what he needs. Exactly. Thank you, Dorian. Thank you, Bernard Gohar. How you doing, sweetheart, for your uh, membership? I appreciate you. <sighs> But now you have been promoted. You are now one of my elite employees. So thank you so very much. Thank you, Mark. So unless you're on your A game. Exactly. Thank you, John. Said, so hey, Kendra, showing love. Kept looks great on you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you, Malika. Said, selfishness, self-entitlement, and practical beliefs are the choices and characteristics of modern black women, keeping them divorced, lost, and alone. Thank you, Chrissy G. Said, Crimson, giving that cheat code, and the hyena still going to fumble. You know they're going to fumble. Thank you, Sister Beshua. Said, if you love your husband and doing what he likes is not grievous. Thank you. And thank you, King Adam. Said, are these the same women who say they'll do whatever he wants if he's paying all the bills somebody lying somebody is not truthful And thank you so much, Antonio. So Kendra, my fellow Illinoisan, don't know what they say in Cook County, but in Jackson Country, the old head say, if she suck you stupid, she keep you smart. <laughs> okay, I ain't never heard that one, but that's a good one. <laughs> but if you like your husband, I want y'all to hear, I want y'all to hear what else she say. Uh, just hear the tap dance. I just want y'all to hear the rest of the tap dance. Yeah, it is. We have, uh, <laughs> we got other shit to do. We got, if we have families, we have children, we have to prepare for school. We got to take care of you. We got to take care of ourselves. We got to bathe. We got to take care of house. Like, it's just a lot. It's just a lot to do it every single day. So even though it may make you a better, I would be a better person if I had a million dollars every single day gifted to me. Exactly. But that's impractical, right? Oh, so oh but I said can... practical. I said practical. I didn't say impractical. I said practical. Right. And I'm saying it's impractical. It's, it's practical for you to, to feel that way, but it's impractical to expect it every Damn. single day. Damn. But it sounds it sounds like if every we single go day ahead and, but it sounds like if we as women go ahead and do that, then that man is happy, and then in turn we'll be happy because we are pleasing that man. That's well, you what, know what? That's you're what not gonna be happy. See, I knew I was gonna say that. Look, look, Ali, he's like, yeah, that's what. It and you're not gonna be happy every day, and that's life. The, so deal the problem, with but that's that's what it ain't sounds. that interesting? How when it comes to what men want, they understand that you can't be happy every day. Don't the. Do y'all do y'all? You don't find that suspicious. You don't find that suspicious. You don't find that suspicious. You don't find that suspicious that when it comes to what men want, women understand very clearly 
that you do not, oh, you can't always be happy. You're not going to be happy every day. You're, you know, there are days is different. You feel differently. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but when you ask them about their happiness, they say they need to be happy every day or else the marriage is done. You don't find that suspicious. You don't find that suspicious. You don't find that suspicious. More tap dancing. Because she named, I just want to point this out. She named household duties and stuff that you doing in the middle of the day. We said the morning before that man go to work. That could be three, four o'clock in the morning. Them kids ain't up. You ain't cleaning that house at three, four o'clock in the morning. You ain't cooking no dinner at three, four o'clock in the morning. You ain't got no appointments to go to at three o'clock in the morning. You strolled out in the middle of the bed with your mouth open at three o'clock in the morning. You might as well slide something into it. Did I say that? Did I, you, why you say that? On live stream. Why would you say that? Because it's true. I mean, did I lie though? Did, but but is we lying though, Monica? But is we lying though? You in the middle of the bed, leg hanging, one leg in the cover, one leg out the cover, cause you think that regulate the temperature. On oh, one arm here, one arm there, mouth open, breath stank at three o'clock in the morning. You might as well, your mouth open, ain't it? You know how when a baby be half sleep, you know, I ain't even gone. Cause you ain't gotta have all that stuff to do when you want uh one of these little dudes to come by and knock the what? What they be knocking, y'all? The sonic rings up out of it, and you now you ain't gotta clean your house, right? And you will suck the so you will suck his soul. You understand? You will suck that man brain through it like a straw. But your husband that's telling you I function better. I this helps me, and that's the key. It helped him. The reasons that she's given the amount of pushback that she's giving is because the blowjob for the inexperienced um doesn't help you, it helps him. He like it and get something out of it. And you don't necessarily get nothing out of it. Those of us who know how to bake cakes. When you bake a cake, don't you dip the icing? Don't you be like, oh, the cake better good. 
That's a double entendre. You can take, you can do with that information what you will. But when you bake a cake, don't you taste the batter? Don't you get a little finger full of the icing? And they be like, oh, this icing good. Ooh, this, this. So, so we don't get nothing out of the cake baking? Even if we don't get a slice of the cake. Even if we don't eat any of the cake itself after it is baked, we certainly, because I know every, the reason that the question was so perfect is because it is something that is saying please your husband please do something that pleases your husband even if you don't particularly get nothing out of it you're doing it specifically directly and it only t for him, the benefit is unidirectional. It's not a two-way street. It's just for him. Just Because don't women want men to do stuff that's just for her? That he don't... Me, do men get benefit out of taking you out to eat? And I'm not talking about a random date with a random. I'm talking about your wife. Y'all seen Unk and Hit Clowning? My husband will take me out. He does that for my benefit. Anywhere. It, it can be something simple. A simple place to eat or a fancy place to eat. It doesn't matter. He can take me to these places. He's not particularly getting any benefit out of spending his money on some food I could have cooked at the house. You understand? But he does it from time to time because he know it'll be fun for me we go somewhere and we kick it and this and that he know it's fun for her she want to kick it with me you know i'll be going over here i'll be doing stuff over there da, 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 da. we kicks it he know that he's not getting any particular thing out of that for himself the only thing that he's getting out of it is he gets to see me be happy about it. I need y'all to understand that the only thing that he really getting out of that is I'm smiling and laughing and, you know, saying that we kicking it and we having a good time. And he likes to see the smile on my face. The problem with these women is that they can't bear the thought of doing the same thing for him something that he enjoys immensely you don't particularly get anything I mean you can you understand you lick the batter you understand what I'm saying but it's not specifically for you it's specifically for him he enjoy he why would you not want to do something for your husband that you don't particularly get you know just to see the smile on his face just to know that you performing such an act helps him and it make him feel good not only do it make him feel good in the moment, it make him feel good about you after the moment. You understand? It's like the, it's, I'm going to go back to my cake analogy. Don't it make you feel good to know that you put your foot in the cake and some and when people eat it they do a dance 
and be like, oh, this cake is good. That make me feel good as a cook, right? When I make something to eat and I feed people, I want them to, oh man, this food is good. This food, I, I may not eat none of the food. I didn't do it for me. I did it for them so they can enjoy it, not me. I know I can cook. I know I put my foot in it. I know. I know. I want you to know. It's for you. Not me. I just, I'm almost done making this point. But I'm driving the point home. I want y'all to hear the rest of this tomfoolery. Because I, I sent a super chat at one point for this conversation. Just listen to it. Sounds like they're trying to demand the problem with this. It's, it, it's nowhere near. It's not even that. It's the, I see what him did. The question is beautiful because it's not about whether or not the man requires it. It's about the way that the woman views it. She didn't even really tell you why. <laughs> it's impractical. She said things like, "We got other things to do." Really? <laughs> how, how really? You don't, how you don't got fifteen job? minutes a morning? So, how, how would you say we're viewing? Are we viewing like a job wow. or a task, and not as like our duty as as women? Is that what you would say? The same way you view. Why so are I just, you viewing it as a duty? That's the problem. You think. You think the baking of the cake is a duty. It ain't. I'm here to tell you. I promise you it ain't. But you only feel that way for me and you don't like. For me and you don't particularly like. For men that you don't that you don't really see the value in. For men that don't really turn you on. For men, see, because when a woman is around a man that do that turn her on like that, oh baby, that it ain't no such thing as a time that it can't happen. There's no such thing. You can wake me up in the wee hours of the morning to bake a cake. Huh? I'm a bakery. I'm a 24-7 bakery. I'm an on-call baker. What is you talking about? What is you really saying? You playing. Are you playing all kind of games right now? Like, what are you doing? I'm going to bake on call. I'm worse than a surgeon. What? Okay. I'm worse than a surgeon. I have. Okay. What are you talking about? And it's not just that. It's not just the blowjob. It's anything, anything that he want from you. You should be willing to give it and do so happily. Why is it a job? Why is it a job? Just, if you don't know how to bake cakes, just say that. But don't say, you know, it's a job. Don't. Just say, tell me you don't know how to bake cakes without telling me you don't know how to bake a cake. Just more tap dancing. I say this all the time. When I, I used to, women that I dated, or when I see women, how they would with their children, I would go, I would watch women and go, wow, why are you not the same way with your, ba your man that you are with your baby? You could spend all this time, spread all this love, be so catering with a baby, multiple babies, but you can't, when you do it for a man, it's work in slavery. And so it's what, what podcast is saying absolutely correct. It's you don't, most women don't love men or value and respect men. You don't love doing that for him. You love doing it for your child, but you don't love doing it for your man. And I can, I can go on and say that a lot of women don't even like doing it for their children anymore. But for the most part, women view that as, as work. They view it as <laughs> And the only way you can love a man is to cooperate with him and to listen to him. That's why it's great when we speak about God and God saying it's the God, man, woman, and child is when you're honoring God and following his laws, you show that you love him and you trust him. And y'all go to church on Sundays. But if you love a man, you cooperate with that man and you submit to that man because you love and trust him. 
Ali, 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 so you said six minutes, right, Hemp? Okay. So Dana, what if it was tongue kissing for six minutes every morning? Would that be okay? Um, too much work. No, yeah. it's not too much work, but it's still <laughs> impractical. I think it's impractical because every day is not going to look the same. Some days I'm going to be tired. Some days. I'm going to be sick. Some days you're going to be sick. Some days we're going to, we have other obligations to take care of that are going to take priority over you being satisfied before you walk out, walk out of the door. That's what I'm, I'm saying. I'm not even mad at that. Thank you. That's a great... Okay. I just want y'all to hit the tomfoolery. Of course not, Monica. You know, <laughs> I'm done. I am done. Uh, listen, leave me alone. Y'all about to leave me alone today. No, you didn't say that. <laughs> First of all, Oh my God, we must internalize the flatulation of the matter by transmitting the effervescence of the Indonesian proximity in order to further segregate the crux of my venereal infection. That, I mean... <laughs> I'm not going to play it. Hamp goes on to make another example. He says that he, if it was left up to him, he would sleep on the little couch or day bed or whatever that's in his studio room at night. But his wife wants him to come to bed. But he can't come to bed until he's showered, right, from the, from the day. He, he says he doesn't always feel like doing that. But he says his wife has said it a couple of times. No, she don't have to keep begging. He, he makes the effort to go take a shower instead of just crashing right there. Because y'all know how men do their crash where they stand. Instead of just crashing right there, he makes the effort to go take the shower and lay with his wife. Because she likes that. Because it makes her feel. Because she had a request. That he could fulfill. It takes a little bit of effort to fulfill it. He doesn't always want to fulfill it. However, in order to maintain the peace, in order to maintain the integrity of relationship, and because he loves his wife and wants to see her happy, he, he doesn't mind to take a little bit of effort and do the thing because the request that she had is actually rather simple. It's not a difficult request. She's not asking something out, outlandish for him to do. She still couldn't see it. Because the whole issue of why they were giving pushback. The key to the pushback is because it's something he liked. And you honestly expect me to do things that only he like? You mean to tell me That I have to do something for this man and I don't get a direct benefit from it. You mean to tell me 
He's the only one going to like it. Only if you a numbskull. The only women that don't like this, listen. Talking about we got stuff to do. Girl, no, you don't. And even if you do, and That's why, I'm going to say this and I'm going to end it. That's why them talking about we'll submit when you provide is a lie. No, they don't. They're not going to do anything any different, whether you are a great leader or a bad leader, whether you are a provider or not. No matter what the condition is, they're not going to they're not going to do it because hyenas don't submit. Thank you, uh, Flavor Country said, but as we all know, they get married to the man they need, not the one they like. That's why it's hard for them to give up the head. You're right. Thank you, Eugene said, both people need to be happy, but sometimes sacrifices and compromises have to be made. This comes from communication. Thank you, Black Goku said, Melanie King touched on this a few months ago, <laughs> a few miles ago, mm -hmm. when she covered a video by Psych Hacks. What happens is that modern women put their husbands in the friend zone. That's horrible. Thank you, Bernard said, I find it highly sus. <laughs> right. Thank you so much, Jeffries and Mad Props. See you off the hook, good sis. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, Blue, Blue Exodus. That women don't want to do what's required as women in all rooms, but will call you objectifying if you only require looks. They want the benefits that wives get without doing anything. Thank you so much, Kooji and Dee. Says she sees it as a chore because her mind, she settled and feels that he was not her first choice. Thank you so much, Mark Fuller said, if that was to occur on a regular basis, he's definitely given a four piece unselfishly and without question. Thank you, Blue Exodus at Crimson and dropping bars like she a rapper. Thank you again. So they'll do it for the white man. No questions asked. Jermaine got to pay the black tax. Thank you, Donovan. So it's funny how they claim marrying average men are settling, but the baby daddy is way below average and will give that low life their all. Thank you, Famu87, for becoming a channel member but now you have been promoted <laughs> you are now one of my elite employees thank you so very much family for becoming a member thank you utah I said do you sister davis think it's black men or men in general that they don't want to please they don't like pleasing their husbands white women do the same thing it's a whole bunch of white women be on social media talking about how they don't want to do nothing and and that and the, their men. White women have a different narrative about their men. They say they not turned on by their men because their men don't help them in the house and they do what they call um, weaponized incompetence, where the man act like he don't know how to do simple things like put a dish away or you know some simple like wiping something or something like that, and so that they have to do all of the workload. And so because they have to do all of the workload, then they're not inclined to be sexual at night with this man that has done weaponized incompetence with them all day. They got a different narrative, same result. Um, thank you, Ruminant. So the kissing statement rubbed my face in it. She has an issue consistently doing anything purely for a man's enjoyment, but I'm supposed to protect at the cost of anything up to and including my life. Exactly. So I just wanted to touch on that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here for please. One of my mods, go ahead and put the membership link 
um, into the chat for me, please go ahead and put the membership link in the chat for me. I got two levels of membership. So go ahead and join the Crimsonite family. I got Crimson Squires, which is the support. You get access to a members only discord server and you know, the perks of the emojis and things of that nature. But if you want access to exclusive content, you become a Crimson Knight. And that at that level, there's going to be, or there already is exclusive membership content and more on the way once a week or randomly and or randomly, uh, whenever I think to post anything. Um, so it doesn't have to be once a week. It could be several times a week and there'll be membership exclusive content. Also, we are on the road to a thousand members. So if we get a thousand members, I'll start doing membership only live streams, right? Where we can really get into it and really draw a lot of good things from those live streams as well. So Jump down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel if you have not. Once again, I'm your hostess, The Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimsonites.